And just to explain that away, that was my reaction to how good this movie was, not how bad this movie was. So, M. Night Shyamalan, congratulations. What's up, YouTube? It is everybody's favorite movie nerd, myself, back to once again be delivering the art of mystical movie reviews to you guys for this brand new year of 2017. And to start it off, why not start off with M. Night Shyamalan? He's only the guy who's been Hollywood poison for the better part of, oh, 10, 15 years now. But I gotta say, this trailer surprised me, considering like just how creepy and on edge and what kind of crazy shenanigans it was. And it got me interested because I really thought McAvoy was cool. But now I can officially say after seeing it, The Visit, not The Visit, that was his last movie, Split is Shyamalan's return to grace. It's gonna take a lot to wash out the stench of all of those previous stinky movies, but... Split is his new, it's the best he's been since Sixth Sense. So we are here to break it down. So this is my official non-spoiler review for Split. He's done awful things to people and he'll do awful things to you. So Split follows these three girls that are abducted by this strange guy. They're sitting in their car, right? It's um Anya Taylor-Joy who killed it last year and The Witch and Morgan. Maybe not killed it, but in terms of it was a great breakout year for her. So they're kidnapped by this man and taken to the mysterious bunker. And it's revealed that this man that kidnapped them, Dennis, is actually one of 23 different personalities that all exist inside this one person. Played, of course, by James McAvoy. However, as time goes on, they soon discover that the only way to escape might be to manipulate each personality to turn on each other because there's a 24th personality that's going to emerge called the beast and they don't want to be around when the beast comes out so the way this movie started off i was a little bit skeptical the writing it was it was started to say the way that the movie started it sounded like typical Shyamalan writing so i was like eh, am i gonna be along with this i can just say this right off the bat like i said because this movie is primarily good over bad the actor who plays the dad and the two girlfriends that are with them are all horrible but the dad is off off screen like almost instantaneously and the two girls are like barely in after a while like the majority of this movie is just James McAvoy and Anya Taylor-Joy who are both fantastic and that brings us to McAvoy because oh my god man Oh my god. I mean, don't get me wrong, I've always thought McAvoy is a great actor. I think that he was on par with Michael Fassbender during those X-Men prequels. He was so good as young Professor X, and I really like some of his other work. I've said it before, Victor Frankenstein, the movie that came out two years ago now, wow, the one that was um, directed by Paul McGuigan and written by Max Landis, I thought he was really good in that, and I also really liked him a lot in one, and even if his accent, American accent, was a much spottier in that, but it's much better than this. Holy shit, like... Shyamalan makes McAvoy front and center of this movie, and for good reason, because he is absolutely incredible. So here's the thing, is that you are dealing with 23 different dissociative personalities. So it's not technically multiple personality disorder that he's got, it's like, it's called dissociative identity disorder, is the specific name for it. Like, when you have to portray certain different personalities, there's a certain level of finesse you have to have in order to convince the audience that you are all of these different people at the same time as one person, and McAvoy does that beautifully. He was so good, he stole absolutely every single scene that he was in. He was Oh my god, it, it was it was a different level of acting, and one that I almost forgot Shyamalan was capable of getting out of his act. I was like, if you look back, Sixth Sense and Unbreakable, they're not just good movies in terms of the writing. Like, Shyamalan's never been that great a writer. He manages to get some truly great performances out of his actors. Like, Bruce Willis is great in both those movies. Then again, it was before he checked out, and Bruce Willis was pretty great back in the day. Helen Joel Osment, fantastic in that first Sixth Sense movie. I even like Mel Gibson and Joaquin Phoenix in Signs. I think that all the problems with that movie aside, their performances are really great. So Shyamalan knows that he got good performances out of his actors, and McAvoy just, he kills it. He kills it. And even though this is his movie primarily, Anya Taylor-Joy is actually really, really good in terms of countermanding him because instead of playing like the typical coup frightened girl like the two horrible best friends are, she is, she's flashing back to previous periods from her life and there, and she's just got so much shit that's happened to her in her past that it makes her able to withstand the torture that he's putting them through and actually able to understand and sort of manipulate what's going on around her. And it actually makes her a really great character. And Anya Taylor-Joy does a really great job. I didn't get a chance to see The Witch. I saw Morgan. Didn't like the movie that much, but I thought she was good in it. And she was really, really good in this. And I'm really looking forward to what she does later on. But as you all know, it is a Shyamalan movie. And we all know what happens in those Shyamalan movies. It's gotta be the twist at the end. Friggin' Bruce Willis is a ghost in Sixth Sense. Aliens are weak to water and signs. The fucking colonial village being located in the real world. And all that shit that happened with... The dumb shit that happened with Lady in the Water and the happening. But let me tell you something. His twists have become gimmicky in the past. Have been gimmicky in the past, like I've said. But this twist... Oh my god. So this is just me going off on a tangent again. 
I am unfortunately one of those people that almost every major great twist in movies that have has been spoiled for me. Not like your regular average run in the mill like twist. Like I'm talking the twist that made movies a completely different movie on the second time around. Like you know Kaiser Soze at the end of Usual Suspects. Uh, Brad Pitt, uh, Tyler Jordan at the end of Fight Club. Obviously the Sixth Sense twist, which like I said, if you have not seen any of those, I apologize. Uh, I didn't directly spoil them though. The reason for that being that the twist that happens at the end of this movie, I'm not going to spoil you for what it is, but it's one of those twists that makes you rethink the, com the movie completely. And there are some people that, there are going to be very few people that are going to be a little bit mad by this, but for the most part, it, it saved the entire movie for me. Because there were parts of this movie, especially near the middle, that got really, really iffy. But once that twist happened, it, like I said, I was mind blown. It's, it's honestly the first twist I think I've ever seen where I am legitimately shocked. And it just made the the movie a completely different movie. So it's like really, so this is, so it's like the movie was marketed one way and that the twist comes along at the end and it makes it a completely different movie. It was great. So overall, I really enjoyed Split. It's a great way to kick off your 2017. Probably one of the best January movies I've seen like ever because we all know that January is the stinky month where all the shit movies get dumped. I wouldn't know. I was started with Ride Along 2 last year and... Oh, that was not good. But yeah, so I'm giving this movie nine out of ten stars. It was really, it, it was really nice to see Shyamalan, a guy who was once, who who People Magazine, not People Magazine, the New York Times once called the next Spielberg, and then just had such a downward spiral where he just caught up and got caught up in his own head. He had his little comeback with a visit last year, but it's nice to see him back on top. It's nice to see him doing something good again. I really enjoyed the twist. Like I said, I won't spoil it for you guys, but go see this movie soon because trust me, it is going to be online and spoiled quickly. So yeah, that is it. That is my official review for Split. Uh, tell me what you guys thought. Comment below. Let me know. Uh, click that like button. Subscribe. Follow me on Twitter at Movie Nerd Review. Go to my website, MovieNerdReviews.com. Also, be sure to check out my brand new channel, Movie Nerd TV. I'm going to start uploading daily content to that, as well as the podcast, the Movie Nerd Podcast, located right here on this channel. That is it. I will see you guys next time.